Welcome to Monroe Live, and uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with a little problem that uh, one of the new Tesla Y owners um, complained about. And uh, his problem was, uh, and that's him right there, Richard Armature, if he happens to be French-Canadian. Um, he, um, uh, he didn't like the noise that was coming out of his heat pump. So remember I talked a little bit about this. This is what goes around the compressor pump for the Tesla Model 3, and this keeps it quiet. Well, I got a phone call from Tesla, and they said they're making a running change. You'll have one of these on one of those, whoops, on one of those shortly. So, uh, Tesla figured it out. They, they know that they've got a problem, that this is too noisy. So, Richard, uh, uh, be prepared. Soon things are, good things will happen. Another question uh, came, from, uh, came from Eric Jacobs, and uh, he said that he's got a problem with the climate control where you can't adjust the climate control for each side. Now, it, it, it doesn't work, but the workaround is to use voice control and say unsync climate control and it'll work. Uh, he also thought that uh, currently there was a problem with the three row seats the way I described it. Um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit, and I'll answer that question. And then the last one was, uh, or sorry, two others. One, uh, there's a, there's a uh, hacker that says there's a heater in the front bumper for the radar, and yes, that's true. And uh, then we uh, got one other little complaint that Eric uh, had, and that was um, apparently you've dropped the auto dim uh, for the wing mirrors. Uh, people would like to have that come back. So if that's a software change, uh, I'd like to make everybody happy. So let's go to the back here, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about things that make me happy. Uh, so let's start with this casting. <clears throat> so in aircraft, we use a lot of castings uh, for some structural, but mostly it's non-structural kinds of products. And, um, and this is a kind of, uh, uh, it, it looks a little bit like that type of casting technique. Now, people will look at this and say, oh, it's one big giant piece, but it's not. It's actually two pieces, and if you count this bracket for sure, three pieces. Three pieces to make that uh, two-piece casting go together. So, so let's, let's have a look at what we're getting out of this. Let's look down here and you can see that um, we've got uh, some nice features here that, uh, that put the seat in place. Those are brackets that I don't have to build. I don't have to buy stamping dies for. That's, that's a good idea. Let's have, a look at, um, let's have a look at those two white mark things that I've got over there. Could that be where the uh, rear facing seats could go? We can't see anything that says that we're going to be putting uh, front facing seats but we sure can see where it could be uh, a potential there for rear facing feet. So let's look over at what else we've got here. So let's look at these attachment points. These are brackets that I don't have to weld on and they're plenty strong. And you can see they're just cast in place. Lots of things can happen if you use castings, uh, especially in aluminum. Now, I don't know exactly uh, whether this is a common thickness. You can see here that it's thicker in this area which would also tell me that maybe this is a seat point. So anyways, it's thicker in this area, <clears throat> but overall in the normal webs and whatnot, it looks like it's about three millimeters, maybe three and a quarter, three and a half. And then the rest of it uh, is bigger where it needs strength. This is a lot of good stuff here. I like that. Now, I can tell you that uh, when it connects to the, uh, the longitudinals here, these braces that are going <clears throat> from the front to the back of the car, we notice that over here you've got um, you've got standard uh, standard bolts, um, and uh, and when you look here, you see something a little bit different. These are common on Japanese uh, cars. See how it's dished out? It's got a little. Here, hang on a second. Let me get my magic pointer here. See how it's dished out there? See that little cavity? The Japanese use it for weight reduction, but it also is good for a shear bolt. So my guess is that this may be something to do with crash worthiness, but I'm not 100% sure. Then let's go over here to, uh, to see how they've adapted some of these trim pieces 
and use these uh, cast features. That's tight. As a, that's plenty tight. I can't get it off. But anyways, we've got cast features here that use to hold on the uh, the uh, um, uh, noise reduction uh, components. And so now let's, uh, we found this as we were tearing the rest of the thing apart. And this is your uh, manual release for the uh, charge port. So let's move down here to things that I'm really happy about. So let's start here. Um, can you shoot uh, over my shoulder or something? So one of the things that I like about uh, some product design is I like it when it works uh, without human intervention. That's good for robotics. And as we talked about over here on the, uh, on the uh, pipes that they're using for the power lines, this is kind of like what I'd like to see the whole car to go together with. See that? It just falls into place correctly. Now let's talk about my absolute favorite little redesign here in the car, okay? The bucket. Uh, I love this, except for one thing. Check out, there's five bolts. Okay, while that's being checked out, let's look at this. This one's the right size, see? And then this one is the same as that. And then this one is the same as this. And this one's the same as that, but why do I have one that's odd? What, what earthly reason would that be for? So one of the suggestions that we have for every customer that we've ever had is to try and make the bolts so that they're the same. It, your operators don't get confused then, and, uh, and it doesn't cost you any more money. And it looks like this would work in here. I don't see any reason why uh, we'd have to have this other bolt. So a little suggestion just for uh, uh, poke yolk, don't, don't do that. So let's, uh, let's take this out, okay? And let's look at the good stuff. <clears throat> so let's have a look down here one more time. And you can see that the, um, the aluminum casting is uh, welded. These are the, some of the weld spots here. It's welded and bolted into position. We haven't taken off the, um, the electronics bay cover yet. But when we get to it, I think we're going to be happy with what we find. Now let's move over here to what I uh, didn't like. So if we, uh, if we look at this, we can see that maybe there could be a retrofit in, uh, in, in, in store here. There doesn't seem any be too much of a reason why Tesla couldn't move away from <coughs> this. Uh, which I did not care for at all, which has, I don't know how many pieces, which really is difficult to put together. And in my videos on the Tesla 3, I talked a lot about this thing and really didn't like it. There's like 80, I don't know how many pieces. If you count all the fasteners and whatnot, I think it was over 100 bits and pieces that, that went into making this rear area. There's 11 pieces just in the... Um, uh, just in the uh, mounting, or sorry, the, uh, the uh, transition from the body to the, to the uh, wheel well. So this was a, I don't know why, but this is a very bad design. Now, I think that this is a good place for a, a running change. I'd really like to see, in fact, there's my note, should be glue in fiberglass. Well, they didn't, uh, they put a couple of uh, bolts in there, and I think I know why. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Before we do that, <coughs> one of the other things that we like to try and do is we have two buckets here. We have, we have this bucket, which is in the front, and this bucket, which I just took out of here. And you can see that mm, they're pretty close. I wonder what could have happened is if somebody could have said, hey, why don't we have both of them the same size? Would there have been a possibility of making this one a little bigger? Uh, so that somehow we could have made all these things get together. It's just a thought, but you can't do it really right now. That's not going to be possible. But I think that um, I think that it's possible in the future. So let's uh, <coughs> let's have uh, let's have a look at uh, this for a little bit here, a little uh, uh, exercise. Should have brought that screwdriver with me. It's hard on the knuckles. So anyway, 
Here we've got a little closeout. <coughs> we've got a little closeout. This closeout exposes the bumper beam, at least the bottom part of the bumper beam. <coughs> so what we could see is um, maybe uh, an attachment or maybe a new bumper beam, which would allow you to have, um, allow you to put a hitch on here. So this to me strikes me anyway, as a, a good idea for uh, an up and coming change to the car. And I think that there's plenty of people that would like to see um, a bumper hitch come in here. So I don't know what the capacity is for, um, uh, whoops. I don't know what the capacity is for towing or even if there is a capacity for towing, but looks to me like there's an option for towing. Anyway, that's, That's pretty much it for, uh, for right now. Anyway, I thank you again. Um, I have one other thing that I'm gonna tell you. You're probably getting tired of seeing me, which is just fine, because I'm tired of doing this. But from now on, or very shortly, you're gonna be hearing from the guys who are tearing apart the bits and pieces at home. I'm in here for the filming and whatnot, and, so, and the tear down of the big lumps. But if we walk over in this direction, uh, you can see, uh, you can see that there's some stuff here that's ready for pickup, um, a seat that's ready for pickup, and then a bunch of toolboxes and whatnot. If there's somebody that doesn't, it needs tools, they'll tell us, we'll fill up the toolbox with the tools that they're going to need, but this stuff here is ready. And what happens is uh, we'll deliver it to their house if they don't have a truck or, uh, or they'll come and pick it up if they do. So uh, that's pretty much everything today. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, make sure you tip those cashiers. Thank you and have a very blessed and, uh, and uh, lovely day. Thank you.